All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to reading data from text files. So a text file is something simple like a notepad file like this. Uh, you'll see here I just have a simple one. I've called it abc.text, and I just have three lines of information on there. One, two, three. You'll also notice my cursor ends there, not down there. Okay, so basically three lines. Where have I saved this file? This file is saved in the directory of the project. So here you see I have a project called sample read write. That's where you have to save it, okay, for this code to work for you for today. So let's take a look at the code. Now a little warning here. Some of the stuff is going to go over your head a little bit. Um, you know, to get you using it, you don't have to understand every little detail, but the basic process and know what you can copy and paste and use in your own programs. So here's the beginning. First, you'll notice some imports that we need here. Uh, something called a buffered reader, which is a class given to us in Java, a class called file reader. And here's one you've probably seen before, ArrayList. As I read this file, I'm actually going to store the lines of text into an ArrayList. And that way, I have all the information available to me anytime I want without having to reread the file. So here we go. Sample read write class. First thing I want you to notice here is I'm coding inside of void main. This is really important because what's going to happen is in your own programs, you won't be coding inside of void main. So you have to watch the follow up video to this to make sure you really understand how to use this stuff in your own programs. Okay, this is just the intro video. So, first thing we have to do, you're going to be opening a file. So, I've got this variable called full file name. Now I know my file was called abc.txt, but you can't just tell the program to open up abc.txt. It needs the full file path. For instance, C drive slash users slash Bob slash document slash programming projects slash file project slash abc.txt. That's what this code here does for you. It basically figures that out for you. The first line system get property user directory this can't change you got to leave that there it finds the user's directory where this program is running from so I've called that current directory you'll see here I've done a little printout of it and then my full file name is going to be the current directory plus I tag on the text slash abc.txt when this is put together this ends up forming the full file name if I give this one a quick run right now, you'll see what these two things print out. There's my directory, and there's the full file path. Now you have to use that full file path when uh, doing the next step, because it needs to know exactly where to find the file. So those lines there are pretty well copy-paste lines, uh, especially until you learn how to do a pop-up dialog that'll grab the file name for you. So for now, that's what you do. The next thing we have to do is we have to set up what they call a buffered reader. Now these two classes work together to read a file. You don't have to know this part in too much detail. Okay, I'll try to give you a little background here. But as long as you can use it to read the file, that's perfectly good for now. It's technically not on the AP exam, so you'll never be asked to actually code this. But of course it's nice to know a little bit about it. The first line uses a class called file reader. That's already made in Java. So you can see here on my little page here, I have a file reader class, and the file reader class has different methods that you can use once you've connected to the file. The problem is, is if you use the file reader class, I'm just going to hunt it down here, you actually only really have this method to use to read the file. And if you do read the description, you'll see it reads a single character. That's really inconvenient to have to read letter by letter and detect when the enter key's been hit, you know, to start a new line in the file. So that's a lot of work for the beginner. So what we do is we use the help of this class, the buffered reader. And what the buffered reader does is it actually gives us one extra method. And that one extra method it gives us is, it still has read, but now it also has read line and just like you would expect this does it reads the entire line to the end until it detects the enter key and then it sends us back the entire line 
as a string. So when we go to read this file, we can go read line. It'll read that whole line here. Then we can go read line. It'll read that whole line. Read line. It'll read that whole line. And it just progresses through the file every time you use the read line command. So the actual setup here, while it looks a little confusing to the uh, new programmer, basically does this. It creates a file reader, and in the constructor, you give it the full file name. This now connects, opens up the file, and it's ready for reading. I could use that if I was okay reading letter by letter, okay, or character by character. But I go the extra step. I make a buffered reader object, which has some better methods like read line, and in its constructor, I give it fr, which was our file reader, which is already connected and has already opened up the file. This is perfect. So that's like a little two-step process there, right? Now, actually using it, we're going to use the buffered reader. You can see down here I go buffered reader, read line. So there's using that method. Once you do this part, assuming all goes well, then we actually set up the loop to read through this file to the end. And you'll see what I've done here is I've made an array list just quickly called stuff. And I'm going to read, print, and store each line into that array list. So here we go. Variable string called line. And here's my loop that reads the file to the end. Now this loop is going to look a little weird to the beginner too. It says while this doesn't equal null, keep doing it. And basically what this means is it means while this chunk of code I've highlighted is successful, okay, when it can read a line, then keep doing the loop. When couldn't it read a line? When it hits the end of the file. Eventually when you get to this file, it's going to get uh, down there. Well, I can't get there, but it's going to get right there. It's going to try to read a line, and it's going to send back null as the string because there is nothing there to send back. Well, when that takes place, this highlighted portion is equal to null. And when null doesn't equal null, nope, that breaks the loop, and then it continues down. So this is just a standard little line you can use to keep reading the contents of the file. You'll see here, hey, buffered reader, read a line. Okay, and then that goes on and that reads a line of the file and saves it inside of line. I print out line and hey stuff, that array list I made, add line. So that gets added to the list. And that's really it. That'll boot through a million lines, that'll boot through three lines, that'll even work with zero lines in the file. Oh, here's a big alert. I forgot one really important line. I've just snuck this piece of video uh, inside the rest of the video. Pretend this is here. This is really important. You don't want to leave the file connections open in your programs. When you're finished reading, you want to shut the file. So you'll see this in the completed projects, but it's not in the, uh, the video that you've seen so far. This line of code is missing. You tell the buffered reader to close. And when you close the buffered reader, it knows about the file reader, which is connected to the file, and it'll close that so everything gets shut down. Uh, you don't want to have connections to files that are left open. So that's a little extra we snuck in there, right, that you should always have in your programs. When it's all said and done, I'm just confirming that I've actually read stuff, even though I've seen it print out. I just re-go through my array list, and I print out whatever it was I read in the slots. So when I give this one a run again, you can see the actual output ends up being successful, finds the paths, just read one, the loop keeps going, just read two, just read three, and then the loop ends, and I print out the contents of the array list. So now my program would have that array list storing the information, so you don't have to go and reread the file anymore. You can just Go through whatever slots you want, grab whatever lines you want, nice and easy. Now, that's basic file reading. Like we said, you're not expected to be totally good with a line like this right now. Uh, this is meant to be a little bit confusing. But we had mentioned earlier in the video 
that you know you're expected to be able to use it. So lines like this, just use it, get it in there, and set up your loop to read through the entire file, and usually store it in an array list, or you could store it in an array. Okay, but array list is a good choice, right? Nice and easy to use. Now, the one thing you may have noticed, this. This is the problem with working with files and certain classes. We're going to explain this in the next video. We've been working in static void main, and I added this to save us trouble to give you a nice little intro. What do you do if you actually want to do this kind of file reading code inside of your own classes? Well, that's the next video. Um, so if you this made sense to you, watch the next one where I actually make a simple reader class. And I'll explain what this kind of stuff is talking about when it says throws exception. Thanks for watching.